The story of Romeo and Juliet is boring. I mean, come on, the story's been around for just under 500 years, with constant retellings, reimaginings, and more. I mean, there was that the, the gnome one a while back, right? Who decided that was a good idea? That felt like a fever dream. But if Romeo and Juliet is so good, then where's the sequel? Oh, it's, I guess it's, it's right here, I, I guess. I found it, guys. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, one of, if not the most popular, star-crossed lovers story. A story about two people who could never, ever be together. An incredibly sad story that we're still to this day romanticizing for some reason. But like I said, it's been a long time since that story has come out and we've seen so many different versions that I'm kind of starting to hate the star-crossed lovers and their completely idiotic schemes. So if you've become incredibly jaded like me and only have hate for the two fools in love, have I got an interesting proposition for you. What if we took the story of Romeo and Juliet, but instead of focusing on the star-crossed idiots, we not only changed a couple things, but more importantly, we shifted the focus on the one that came before Juliet. For those who forgot, Juliet ain't exactly Romeo's first choice, as he tries and fails to get with a girl named Rosalind. Now, in Romeo and Juliet, they don't get together, but what if they did? What if Romeo and Rosalind were a match before the events of Romeo and Juliet, but the events after that still played out fairly similarly? Go Away Romeo is actually just a series that basically follows a relatively similar storyline to Romeo and Juliet. No joke, when I first saw the title of the series, there was no thought in my empty, empty head that it was going to tell a Romeo and Juliet story. And my friend laughed at my face for that. Thanks, BJ. I love ya. But that's besides the point. Our main character isn't Romeo or even Juliet, more on them in a bit, instead we follow Rosalind Capulet, Juliet's cousin, someone relegated to the background, ignored and forgotten, someone who would never find true love. Until the man, the myth, the legend himself, Romeo, notices her, starting a secret relationship with her, with some more amorous moments that I definitely don't want to show here in fear of getting demonetized, and a proposal, their relationship starts to grow cold. But. Only a few days later, tragedy strikes both the Capulets and the Montagues, as two are found dead. Not Romeo and Rosalind, but Romeo and Juliet. Rosalind, heartbroken, had one thing left, a child from Romeo, one last gift from him before his unfortunate and untimely death. Right? Ha 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 ha! Here's where things start to get really interesting. You see, retelling a story comes with some issues. Mainly, we see a lot of things coming. Sometimes this works in our favor, especially when there are purposeful twists in the retelling. These changes keep us on our toes, wondering what's coming next, what's changed, and what hasn't. Not only has our main character changed, our point of view changed, but the second major deviation from the source comes in the form of the love-struck idiots and their plan. This time, it, it actually works? Neither Romeo or Juliet actually die. Their sleeping potion plan works as expected, and they run away together at the end of the first episode, leaving Rosalind alone with their child. Go Away Romeo is already a weirdly different story. Yeah, yeah, it's a romance story. There's gonna be romance in it. Look, I'm all full romance. Go away, Webtoon 22 recap. I know my top genre was romance. However, this series does two things that I'm already a fan of, and they both involve the characters. First, the titular character, Romeo. Unsurprisingly, most remakes or reimaginings or whatever make Romeo and Juliet, um, you know, the main characters, are starring star-crossed lovers. Duh, it's a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. It should follow Romeo and Juliet. However, unsurprisingly in the series Go Away Romeo, Romeo ain't exactly the main character. In fact, he's not even the hero. The reason I love this so much already is because they take this character so well established in just media itself. They basically do a 180 and make him the villain of the series. The series title is 
pretty clearly pointing to the fact that Romeo kind of sucks and you should avoid him at all costs, but the very little we've gotten of him before he ditched his own kid and Rosalind to pretend to die with a different girl that he met which was also her cousin is not good. He seems to use Rosalind and even Juliet, seemingly just putting on an act to trick some girls to fall in love with him and either use them until he finds someone who's prettier or until he gets bored. Honestly, we haven't seen enough of Romeo for me to say anything specifically, but to me, that's already such a cool aspect to the series. Taking an already well-established character, someone we've spent 500-ish years learning about, sympathizing with, someone who really never got to be with his true love, and making him the villain of the series is already so cool. Now, in the normal Romeo and Juliet story, it's hard to make Romeo the villain, which brings us to the second thing I'm a fan of, which is the changes. Yeah, they change our view on Romeo and Juliet, but they also change who lives, who dies, and who tells the story. There are many people who appear in this series, but what I already find interesting is who dies, or more accurately, who doesn't die. If you don't remember your comprehensive Romeo and Juliet studies, you better listen up. This is gonna be on the test. There are six major deaths in Romeo and Juliet, according to Google. Those being Mercutio, Tybalt, Paris, the star-crossed lovers Romeo and Juliet, and apparently Romeo's mom, which I didn't actually know she died, so must not have been that important. But so far, out of those six, four are outright confirmed to be alive. The star-crossed lovers, yeah, sure, those fools are still kicking. But interestingly enough, Tybalt and Paris are both alive and directly shown in the series. And since Tybalt is alive, that means Mercutio should technically still be alive as well. Since Mercutio was killed by Tybalt, and because of that, Romeo killed Tybalt. So since Tybalt is still alive, Mercutio should still be alive. So everyone who did die is likely still alive, except for Romeo's mom. I have no idea if she's alive, and honestly, I doubt it's all that important. Which actually brings us to the main event. The main character, Rosalind. Rosalind wasn't exactly a character in the original source material. She was really just the girl who rejected Romeo, and I think out of piety or faith or something. To be honest, I don't remember too much about the story. But this story changes her fate. Instead, she did say yes to Romeo. She fell in love with him. She got engaged to him. She had a child with him. And she was abandoned by him. Leaving her all alone with his child. Never really thought I'd call Romeo a deadbeat dad, but Webtoon makes me do weird things. Which finally brings us to Rosalind. There has been an increase in strong female lead stories that I've been reading. I talked about this a couple weeks back while covering revenge stories, but I've really been enjoying following a female lead kick butt and take names. Marry My Husband, I'm the Queen of This Life, Remarried Empress, even action series like Hero Killer or Senorita Cometa. There's just something about a cool, level-headed protagonist who can see every possible possibility and knows exactly what to do or say to get the most out of any situation, even playing their opponents to their advantage. Advantage. That's why revenge stories usually have the protagonist be sent back in time, so that they can know what's happening ahead of time and plan for it. Now you don't have to worry, Rosalind wasn't sent back in time when she died or whatever, they're not changing that much from the original source, but she does follow in the footsteps of our revenge-seeking female leads from before. Level-headed, calm in the face of any situation or problem, and honestly the reason is very sweet. Unlike the series I mentioned before, where they're going out of their way to do things out of revenge or spite, I mentioned before that Rosalind has a child with Romeo. The story actually starts a number of years after Romeo and Juliet's alleged death, when their son, Mino, the adorable little munchkin, is already a number of years old. I'm not super sure how old, but he's a child that can talk. However, this is medieval times, I assume. I'm not super sure, maybe it's renaissance, I don't know. But having a child with someone outside of being married is kind of considered a big no-no, as just about everyone explains to her. But instead of being ashamed of it, instead of hiding herself or her son away so that no one would ever talk about them, notice them, mention them as her father demands it to be, she decides to go out into the world and make her presence known to just about everyone with her son. I mentioned this series is a romance, but so far the series has been more about a mother trying to show her kid how to be strong and brave in a dangerous and scary world. As she puts it, it's better to show my son how to be brave. I want my son to live confidently in the world. 
She just wants her son to be strong and confident by being strong and confident herself. By standing up to nobles and royalty, smooth talking, and by being a good mom. By being determined and unwavering. The series isn't about a female lead getting revenge or anything like that. It's just about her against the world, against her own family, and her trying her hardest to protect her child. And so far, it's been a really interesting read. So make sure to check out Go Away Romeo, updating every week on Webtoon.